welcome to this video from Thrive Admin Services. I'm Mary Ann, the Microsoft Magician here at Thrive. In this video, I'm actually going to show you how to create a SharePoint site that you can use as the basis for creating a client portal for your client work and how to add your clients to that, that site. So we'll be using SharePoint uh, on the web, so using Microsoft 365 on the web, and then we'll be working in Outlook on the web to manage our group and to be able to add external people outside our organization. So let's get started. We're going to need to create a SharePoint site before we can add anybody to it. So to do that, we go to office.com on our web browser and up at the top in our app launcher from the nine dots there, we select SharePoint. Now it should automatically open in a new tab. It won't matter either way for you. So this is my SharePoint home page for me and my account. And what we're going to do today is we're actually going to create a site and I'm going to set one up as a test client site so that we can work through the process using the same details for all of the other elements. Now there are two types of site you can create. You can create a team site or a communication site. And this one is set up to say that you can create portals and subjects specific sites. But what I like to do is I use my SharePoint sites as the basis for my client portals. And I want the members that I add to that site to be able to publish content, upload content and share resources. So I always choose a collaboration style site, which is a team site. So we click on that one and we now give our site a name. So I'm going to call this one test client. Um, normally I would call it whatever the client I'm going to be working with is now um, you can see there's a group email address that is literally the site name with no spaces and you can edit that using the pencil and this is the site address so it's my website dot share so it's thriveadmin.com.sharepoint.com slash sites and then test client now mine has a 49 on it because i've obviously done a few versions of this so i can't always just use the same one um, alternatively if that was a client's name you know if it was abc PTYLTD, then that's what it would say at the end as well. You can pop a description in. I never usually bother. I leave it as private so that only members can access this site. So only people I choose to add to this site will be able to access it. And my language is English. We go next. Um, it says you can add members here but I don't usually do this at this point because I need to add, I need to actually invite them in because the client will be coming from outside of my organization. So we'll do, we'll leave this one for now and we just go finish. So it's effectively created my SharePoint site. So I now have a standard setup um, and it will now ask me if I would like to use any of the templates that SharePoint has in it already. Page of our SharePoint site is to actually edit the main elements. So when I'm thinking about this as a client portal, I like to keep it really clean and simple and I remove anything that won't be relevant to how I work with my clients. So um, the first thing that I do is I go to the edit button, which is the little pencil over on the right hand side, and it's now broken it down and you can see that the page is broken into sections and web parts. So a section um, is uh, can be set up and you can have as many sections as you like and you can split them in lots of different ways I tend to just use the one column layout so that things are in blocks and very easy to follow So if I was to add a new column, you can see this is one column. This one's been set up as two um, What I can also do is I can drag and drop the elements that are already built in So your standard elements are a news page quick links your documents and your activity um, so I'm going to move the document library up into this single one just by dragging and dropping with the mouse. So you can see this is it now sitting here. Um, I also, I don't need the quick link. So when I click on a web part, I can move it, I can edit it, I can duplicate it or I can delete it. And the same, I don't use the news section either. And then the other thing I can do is I can actually convert this section here. So in this section, when I click in the section, these sub menus come out so I can edit it and I can now convert this one to one column. So you see it stretches it out a little bit better. Um, and we'll do that one. So at the moment I've got my document library and activity, and that's all I really need for now 
because my client portals will typically include a planner as well. But you'll see there's another video on how we create a planner for a client and then we will link it to this SharePoint site. So I'm going to republish this. And now my SharePoint site is sitting looking um, in a very similar way to what my client will see when they look at it. Um, for reference, the document section here is a uh, OneDrive folder. So this is where I can share that link for that client and they can put content in and I can share links from this OneDrive document folder with the client so that they can access content that I've prepared for them as well. So the last thing that we're going to do now that we've got our SharePoint site set up is that we're going to invite our client or the people that we're going to collaborate with to work on this as well. So to do that, we're actually doing it through Outlook. We're creating the group and the members in Outlook. So I'm going to do this on the web. So we go back to our Microsoft Office uh, homepage and from the app launcher, you can select Outlook. If you've used it before, it may pop up here as one of your regular um, or high use ones. So you can do that either way and it will open in a new tab. So this is going to open your Outlook on the web uh, so this will be your full inbox and in the uh, main window so we've got our taskbar on the left then we've got our folder window our emails and our viewer is the way mine lay is laid out as you scroll down to the very bottom we get down to groups so underneath your folders is the groups section and in this section we're going to go to manage groups at the very bottom so this will open a new tab and for me, you'll see there's quite a few because I have lots of groups for all the different client portals that I've created. You may only have a couple, so it'd be easier for you. And what you're gonna look for is our particular uh, SharePoint site that we've created. So you can see I've got it sitting up there. It shows that it's test client. So I'm opening this one here, which is test client. Now, um, here what I can do is I can add that it is a, um, at the moment, because I've been playing around with it to test, I'm already added my personal email account. So um, from the web view at the top here, you can edit your group, you can add members, you can add it to your favorites, you can invite others, you can leave the group or you can follow it. So if you invite others, that gives you a link that you can share and you can pop that into an email. And then they actually will then, the moment they click that for the first time, you'll have to approve it or you can simply add members and you type in the email address. So in my instance, it was my own that I popped in and you can see it adds it as a guest. Um, I'm adding a guest, they get limited resources and you click add, so they've been added. So you go close and then that person's details will sit here. What I also wanna show you is what the person at the other end receives. So I get this one is the email that they get. So this is the one that came to my Gmail. So it says, welcome to the test client group. This is the email address. And it tells you tells the, the person who's received the invite how they can be a part of it. So they can add this so that they'll get all the messages when they come in. This is the email address that belongs to that site. They can go to a shared notebook. Um, and it says to save the email so they can go back and then they can go to the SharePoint site. So if I click on go to SharePoint, it will open that site for them. So that's that direct link again. So they have it there. They can then add it to their bookmark bar. They can um, save it however they would normally keep all of their links. And then they've got direct access to that document folder and all of the other content as well. So in this video, I've shown you how you can create a SharePoint site, how you can edit the layout of that site to make it work in a way that makes sense to you uh, for sharing with your clients, and then how you can invite your client to join you on that SharePoint site. A SharePoint site forms the foundation for any other tools you may use to collaborate with your client. So that could be planner, uh, documents, spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, other files that you need to communicate backwards and forwards. Uh, it's also where you can pop links to forms, you can create your planner boards, you can save um, project files, contracts, all of your information can be centralised using that SharePoint site as the foundation 
And from there, what you'll do is you'll add those layers of other content, but they all tie back to that one central place. So I really hope that this has shown you that SharePoint is a fundamental building block to be able to create customized content and customized experiences for your clients using Microsoft 365. It's not scary. It just takes a little bit of getting used to because it's um, once you've got that base right and it's solid, then it's much easier to go forward and add from there. If you've enjoyed this video, then please let me know. You can subscribe to Thrive's YouTube channel so that you know about all of the future content as soon as it gets released. You can get in touch with me directly, uh, marianne at thriveadmin.com if you have a question about anything you've seen in this video or you'd like to know about something else and we can have a chat about how I can help you to get the most out of your Microsoft 365 subscription. If you're looking for more support, then there are loads of ways that we can work together or that you can follow along and learn at your own pace. You can check out thriveadmin.com. We've got a great range of blogs and resources and tools in our shop. You can also head to uh, Microsoft Dynamos, which is our free Facebook group. And that's where we share and work together to solve problems and with our monthly training sessions. It's a really great resource space. Um, I'll be able to help you, but there's also some, uh, some members who are using Microsoft in some really cool ways. If you're looking for a bit more support, you can get in touch with me directly. You will find Thrive by searching for Thrive Admin Services on Facebook, intra, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, or LinkedIn. Um, and you can see what we share and how, we're, how we work to help you. All of the content and resources that we have are available via links on any of our social web, social media profiles or you can visit our website, thriveadmin.com. If you have a question or you uh, want to know something specific about how we can work together, please get in touch. I would love to help you get more bang for your buck from your Microsoft 365 subscription.